Some things take a long time to heal. I remember my first bicycle accident that left me with a gaping wound in my thumb. I was six years old when I collided with my best friend on his bike. We careened into a tree and wound up in a tangled pile by the curb. I ended up with blood gushing out of my thumb. I was so startled, I am sure that I screamed most, if not all, of the way home. While six stitches and a very oversized bandage did their job to heal and protect, it was my first taste of an injury more than, you know, a skinned knee. I also experienced disbelief that this had altered my playground activity schedule. It certainly slowed me down. I remember the blood, I remember the screaming, and I remember getting stitches in the hospital. But I also remember how long it took to heal. If you should ever ask, yes, I have the scar to prove it. Some things take a long time to heal. Wicked sinus infections bursitis, tendonitis, or any other sort of itis you may come across. They take a long time to heal. Hip replacement number three might take a long time to heal. But the other things that take a long time to heal are a broken heart, not getting tenure, or into your number one choice school or the disbelief of losing a loved one, the life with chronic pain, an emotional wound from self or others, the unknown trauma of a historic pandemic isolation, even a broken spirit. Many of us have experiences that make it hard to recover. Well, somehow, no matter what we face, We are forever changed. Some wounds, however invisible to the naked eye, are not easily mended. Some things take a long time to heal. Some wounds do not go away. The most difficult are the wounds that we don't see or those that we don't share. They remain invisible, operating just below the surface of our lives, and when and if these wounds ever surface, they're often unrecognizable and often misunderstood. Which brings me to the text for this morning. The text according to John, the gospel according to John in chapter 20, is the common text we hear every every Sunday this after Easter. It's the story of the resurrected Jesus who enters the locked room where the disciples gather in their disbelief and fear. It's where he greets them with a familiar greeting, peace be with you, and shows them his crucifixion wounds. It's where Jesus' wounds identify him. These disciples see for themselves that the Jesus crucified has been raised. And in that moment, They rejoice. But I imagine that the disciples are are still shaken from all that they have witnessed and experienced. They are stuck in that initial cycle of loss and trauma and fear. How do they ever get over what they saw, what they witnessed, that gruesome spectacle, the humiliation, the death of their beloved friend, Even more, how do they come to grips with the story of Jesus' resurrection and now an abandoned tomb? Some things take a long time to heal. This familiar text also tells us of the one one of the disciples who wasn't there when all that happened. Thomas, you know, he must have been the one who was out getting takeout when Jesus appeared to everyone else. Quite frankly, When Thomas returns, he finds his friend's testimony a little hard to believe. Unless I see the mark, 
of the nails in his hand and put my finger in the mark and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Well, a week later, when Jesus returns a second time to the disciples in that locked room, Jesus shows Thomas his wounds. Thomas gets his chance to see for himself, and he comes in close. He wanted to be sure that the Jesus he saw crucified is the one whom God raised from the dead. Jesus shows the wounds he carries out of his own desolate grave. Jesus' rejected, uh, resurrected body doesn't show faded scars. They're more like fresh wounds, still raw for Thomas to see and touch. In an essay called Fingering the Evidence, Richard Hayes asks, Huh, isn't it curious that God could raise Jesus from the dead, but didn't heal the nail wounds in his hands? The power of death is conquered, but the scars remain. Unquote. Well, Jesus shares his wounds. He doesn't pull away or wince but he opens his cloak to show Thomas and the others his pierced side. His woundedness is on full display for his friends. These wounds haven't healed right away. He doesn't shy away from them. He doesn't use some scar minimizer or Hollywood makeup to cover him up. The disciples recognize him by those real and very raw wounds. In his wounds, Jesus makes real and available the pain of the world, which he has now taken on. This account from John displays the veracity and the triumph of Christian faith, of believing. And yet, it's also a story about wounds. Many interpretations focus on Christ's victory in the resurrection, reflecting Christianity's such unease with the wounds that remain on the body of the risen Jesus. What I want us to consider this morning is how the story on the first and second Easter evenings in that locked room helps expand our understanding, expand the narrative to our present world where wounds mark all of humanity. By looking again and again to Christ's woundedness, we discover ways to live with our own. And I'm going to say that again. By looking at Christ's woundedness, we discover ways to live with our own. In her book, Resurrecting Wounds, Living in the Afterlife of Trauma, theologian Shelley Rambo considers the story of the upper room as an extension of the healing stories in the Gospels. In the upper room, the disciples gather around wounds in a different way. Now, early in Jesus' ministry, Jesus directs the disciples to the wounds of those who approach him to be healed, to observe, to do crowd control. But now, they gather around his wounds. First, to watch the execution, and second, to make sense of this curious return. This was the way that Jesus encountered people. He tended to wounds, even naming the ones that they did not know that they had. Well, in, return to the dis in his return to the disciples, Jesus brings the memory of all worldly suffering forward. He brings it to teach the disciples and us a way of engaging our wounds. Jesus' body was marked by the social forces of his day. The crucifixion marks are signs of the denigration and his humiliation at the hands of the empire. This is part of the history of his body. Jesus' wounds identify him. They connect us with our own wounds and with all suffering. 
Jesus' crucifixion nails the suffering of his one body to all the other suffering in history, before and since. Jesus' body mark bears the marks of universal suffering. This means that in our time, Jesus' body bears the wounds of all in minority communities who have endured brutality and injustice. From Emmett Till in 1955, to Matthew Shepard in 1988, to Trayvon Martin in 2012, to Columbus's own Henry Green and Tyree King in 2016, to Ahmaud Arbery and Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, and Columbus's Casey Goodson Jr. and Andre Hill, to so many indigenous women and transgendered individuals who are yet unnamed. Jesus' body bears these marks of the eight who have died in Atlanta last month, the Asian American women dead, the 10 who died in Boulder grocery store, and the week, <clears throat> and this week in Texas and South Carolina, as well as the countless unnamed people wounded and crucified through the eons to every point on the globe. Well, even for Jesus, life after the resurrection still has wounds. We are still wounded. For some, the Monday after Easter feels a lot like Friday. And how are we going to shake that feeling? Well, for us, about witnessing and seeing and believing, witnessing is less about seeing and believing right now than it is about remaining with the trauma and taking each day to heal in its own time and finding a way to move forward into healing, trusting that our risen Lord is with us just as he was for his friends. And in our present moment, Jesus, the risen Christ, comes to us behind doors that are locked by fear. He invites us to identify and tend to those wounds, both public and private. He bears witness to the possibility that public healing and transformation can happen. He bears witness to that. And he invites us to do the same. Thanks be to God.